Greetings, welcome back to another full day of eating. Today I specifically wanted to share some high protein, vegan friendly meal ideas, because Eric and I have been back at the gym like actually consistently for the past like two-ish months. So I have been doing my best to be more mindful about getting enough protein and nutrients so that I can get stronger again. So before I get into the recipes, I wanna give a huge thank you to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. They make a vegan friendly multivitamin. I've been taking it for the past several years. I love it. They hooked me up with a discount code for you guys and I'll have a link in the description box with a little bit more info if you'd like to try them out. I'll give you more deets later but for now I want to show you this high protein breakfast idea that I made last night. I've got breakfast. I'm coming back into the studio because it just has the best lighting in the house. These are overnight oats. You may know or may not know. I have like a love-hate relationship with oats but it's mostly on the side of hatred but I do like overnight oats. That's pretty much the only way I like them prepared. So I made overnight oats, I added a little bit of protein in there and I blended it all together. And then I have this layer of coconut cream. So it's kind of like tiramisu overnight oats. Very fancy, I love tiramisu, it's like my favorite dessert. You can see. I'm just here for a taste test. <laughs> so last night what I did was I made a couple servings all at once. We're gonna do a little taste test. I already ate a bunch of this out of the blender yesterday, so I know it's good. I have not had it yet. But the coconut cream like thickened up in the fridge. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I thought you were gonna give that bite to me, honestly. It is so good. Mmm. Cause it's like tricking yourself into thinking you're eating dessert, but it's protein oats. It doesn't taste like healthy. You know what I mean? Healthy. <laughs> it's really nice. I'm proud of this one. I also have a love-hate relationship with oats in general that also errs on the side of hate. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've made overnight oats in like years. Yeah. But this, this slaps. Okay. Thank you, I love you, that was delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a little rundown about how I made this. It's super simple, but I just took my blender, I added some quick cook oats. I used soy milk just because it's higher in protein, unsweetened plain soy milk. You could use any kind of milk that you want. Added in a few tablespoons of chia seeds just to help thicken it up and to add some healthy fats in there. Then I added in some cocoa powder just to augment the flavor of chocolate from the protein powder that I also added. Currently we have protein powder from Ghost Lifestyle. We found it at Vitamin Shop, GNC, I'm not sure. But it's really good. It's chocolate cereal milk flavor. I like it a lot, but it is very sweet. So I added that in and then I kind of mixed all the ingredients together in the blender. Then I tasted it and adjusted it uh, with a little bit of maple syrup to boost the sweetness a tiny bit. I was originally just gonna make chocolate oats and I was gonna top them with strawberries, but then I remembered seeing on TikTok people had made overnight tiramisu oats. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna add in some instant coffee powder. So I did that and then I dispersed all of my blended oats between a few small jars. And then I took a can of coconut cream. I scooped the cream part off the top, added in a little bit of maple syrup just to lightly sweeten it. And then I spooned a layer of that over all of the oats. And then I just dusted it with some more cocoa powder. And I'm really happy with how it came out. The one thing is I think I want like a little bit more of a robust coffee flavor. So I might add in like a shot or two of espresso if I make it again, when I make it again, cause I will make it again. I'm actually like highly tempted to just go ahead and put Kahlua in it. Cause I feel like nothing else really nails that tiramisu flavor quite as much, but I feel like that would be like a little counterintuitive cause it's supposed to be like a healthy breakfast. I will write out the measurements for this in the description box below if you'd like to try it out. Mm-hmm, it's good. Oh, also I'm not drinking coffee this morning cause I am still on an energy drink kick. So I have a little can of White Monster here. Yeah, I, I just feel like every time I start getting back into lifting, I get obsessed with energy drinks. I'm not sure why, but um, yeah, that's what I'm having. I wanna chat with you really quickly about the sponsor of today's video. So I mentioned I'm working with Ritual and they make the multivitamin that I've been taking since 2019. I take their Essential for Women multivitamin, but they have something for everyone actually. They have a teens, a men's, a 50 plus, a pre and postnatal version. And I just like it, it helps me to fill in any gaps in my diet. I do of course try my best to eat a well-rounded, balanced diet, but this just kind of gives me that extra insurance. And it contains nine nutrients, so a couple of things 
contains, it covers B12, uh, D3, it also contains a vegan friendly omega-3 which is derived from algae instead of fish. They're very transparent about their sourcing so you know they're high quality ingredients. The capsules have a delayed release technology so if you did want to take them first thing in the morning on an empty stomach you'd be totally fine to do that. It's a subscription so it does come straight to your door every month which I personally really like because I never have to think about it. And of course their vitamins are vegan friendly, they are free of gluten and other major allergens, no sugar, and no artificial colorants or anything like that. So if you're interested in trying out Ritual, I am going to have a link in the description box and you can use my code on the screen to get 20% off your first month. Okay, it's still quite early in the day, but I did do a little bit of prep work for dinner because I'm making cilantro lime tofu and I wanted to give it ample time to marinate. So I just prepped that. So for that, I sliced up a block of firm tofu into half inch steaks. I just used a clean kitchen towel to press out the extra liquid while I mixed up the marinade ingredients in a sealable Pyrex container. Marinade is kind of similar to the carne asada marinade that I use for my soy curls, so I will link that down below if you'd like to reference it. But it's the juice of one orange, the zest and juice of one lime, a handful of chopped cilantro, a couple cloves of garlic, I just used my garlic press to make it super easy. And I also added a splash of agave, just for a little bit of sweetness. A couple tablespoons of olive oil. A little bit of ground cumin. I added in some soy sauce for a savory flavor. So I just whisked all those ingredients together with a fork and then I layered in my tofu and I sealed the container and just gave it a shake and I'm probably gonna give it a shake one or two more times over the next couple of hours just to ensure that they are marinating evenly. I'm gonna be baking the tofu and then serving it with a mango salsa and coconut rice. I'm super excited for dinner. So I just prepped all the mango salsa ingredients too. So let's go ahead and throw those together. We've got some fresh chopped mango some red bell pepper and some jalapeno. Got some finely diced red onion and cilantro. And then a nice ripe avocado. Just a little bit of lime juice. Okay guys, for lunch, I wanted to try to make like a protein mac and cheese. So I'm gonna be using white beans as the base for our cheese sauce. And then I found this Protein Plus Pasta by Barilla. I'm not a big fan of like, uh, like the bonza chickpea or lentil based pastas. I just don't like the texture that much. But this is a wheat based pasta that's just kind of fortified with some plant protein from lentils, peas, chickpeas, barley, and spelt. So I haven't tried it before. Hopefully, I like it a little bit better than the like fully gluten-free pastas. So let's go ahead and get our pasta boiling first and then I will walk you through the cheese sauce. I'm not operating off a recipe, I'm just gonna kind of wing it and hopefully it comes out well. So I saw this TikTok recently that said that you're not supposed to open a can like with the can opener like this. You're actually supposed to use it like horizontally, like this. And it like cleanly takes the top off. So that's how I open it now. You guys, our fridge is so loud. I unplug it every time I film in here. <laughs> Sweet silence. Pasta is done. I want to go ahead and try this because I'm curious. It's good. It doesn't taste that different from regular pasta. And I think when I put the sauce on it, I'm not even going to be able to tell the difference. So good stuff. Okay, so I've assembled all my sauce ingredients. I have, of course, my white beans. I went ahead and drained these. I'm gonna pop those into our blender. I'm like really hoping it all fits in this blender. I'm constantly underestimating how much space things are gonna take up. Okay, whenever I'm making like a potato or cashew based cheese sauce, I throw in a carrot just to add some color and to add some bulk to the sauce. 
I'm not sure if it's necessary here, but I figure why not. So I peeled a carrot and chopped it up and I just boiled it for like 10 minutes until it was tender. Then I have about half a cup of cashews. I only have roasted salted right now. Raw would be ideal. And if you don't have a particularly powerful blender, I'd recommend soaking them for a few hours or just boil them for like 10 minutes. You can boil them with a the carrot if you want to. So let's get these guys in here. All right. I may need to transfer it to a larger blender. Gonna add in some milk. I'm using canned full fat coconut milk just because I feel like having a little bit of, bit of fat in there will make the texture better. Uh, but if you wanted to go lower fat or if you wanted to add some extra protein, you could use soy milk, unsweetened plain soy milk or like cashew milk. We gotta transfer it. This is classic Sarah. Okay. Nutritional yeast, a must for cheesy sauces. This also contains a fair amount of protein. I think it's like per two tablespoons, eight grams of protein, pretty nice. I'm gonna add in some miso paste because add a little bit of funk. And then we've got some spices, garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika. And then I went ahead and juiced a lemon. You could use apple cider vinegar too if you wanted. I'm gonna start with just one tablespoon of lemon juice. I don't want it to get, I don't want it to be too tart. I will taste and adjust as needed. Okay, we've got to switch out the blender base too. I feel like it's like inappropriate to show the back of my blender. Like people are always like, no, no. Oh, let's add like a half a teaspoon of salt as well. My cashews were already salted, so. Oh, and miso is salty. Close your ears. Okay, it looks really good. It smells really good. It's very creamy. Let's try it. Whoa, that's really good. I don't taste the beans at all. It's like a little bit grittier in texture than like a potato based cheese sauce, but it's good. This might be my favorite. I'm gonna dip a noodle in the sauce. <laughs> I really don't think I need to make any adjustments to this. I'm like pretty proud of myself. I'm trying to be better about getting in more servings of leafy greens. I feel like I've been slacking on that lately. So with our protein mac and cheese for lunch, we are going to be having some Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna cook them in the air fryer just to make them easy. I'm gonna use the shredding disc of my food processor just to really quickly shave these. I'm a big fan of using appliances to make my life easier. So pardon me while I do that. These Brussels sprouts are like massive. Look at this. Change of plans. I am actually gonna use the oven instead of the air fryer just so I can cook all of this in one batch and have some leftovers for the next few days. Yeah. So for our seasoning, I'm gonna keep it super simple and we're just gonna use a little bit of olive oil. I got these like squeezy bottles from Target. We use them for our olive oil and our soy sauce and they're really handy. We used to use, we would just save old sriracha bottles and use those instead. I have some of this fancy smoked sea salt. Let me use some of that. It's like the flaky salt. And then some black pepper. And I think I'm actually just gonna throw in the remainder of the lemon juice from the lemon I squeezed, squoze for the cheese sauce because why not? And then you just get in there, massage it into all the crevices. Oven is preheating to 425. I really like to cook my Brussels sprouts until they're just like a little bit charred. If you're short on time, cooking these in a cast iron is really nice as well because you can really get that, that like smoky, slightly burnt <laughs> flavor that is really good for some reason. Oh yeah, I am really excited to eat these. I feel like my body knows that my diet has been low in greens lately. You guys, I have so many baking trays and silicone baking mats and somehow 
every time I need one, they are all dirty, always. It's like my brain deletes them from my perception when I'm cleaning after dinner. You're just gonna spread this out in an even layer. And then I'm gonna pop these in the oven and I'm probably gonna give them a stir like every 15-ish minutes or so until they are cooked to my liking. Lunch is ready. Brussels sprouts, mac and cheese. I put, <laughs> I put sriracha on his. Thank you, I appreciate it. I didn't even ask, she just did it. Mmm, that's so good. What is it? Guess. Tofu? No. No? Mm -mm. Not at all? Mm -mm. Nuts? Some kind? There are nuts, there's cashews. Okay. But it's mostly white beans. White beans? Mm-hmm. I guess I get that. I can get a beanie, like, beanie texture from it. Yeah, I get that. It's good though, right? It really I was good. shocked. Mm -hmm. It's basically like the um, veggie cheese sauce you normally make for mac and cheese. It was like a little added protein bonus. Mm -hmm. No yeah. potatoes. No potatoes. There's mm. coconut milk too. What do you think about the pasta? You know, it's really not bad. And I'm like a pasta... Snob. Aficionado. <laughs> I make a joke of it, and like every time we go to the store and we're gonna get pasta, I say, is that Teflon cut or bronze cut? Because if it's Teflon cut, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. Only want bronze cut pasta. But no, this is... Um, you approve? I approve for like a protein pasta. Because usually it's like kind of gross. Mm -hmm. This is good. Yeah, we really don't like the chickpea pasta. The it's only like, gluten-free pasta we like is the jovial brown rice pasta and the tinkiata brown mm -hmm. rice pasta. Also, I agree. Brussels sprouts and mac and cheese. We always do that. Mm -hmm. It's like the best combo. Okay. I'm going to have this recipe for the cheese sauce linked down below because I'm going to put it on the blog. You're going to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got it. I have one more recipe for you guys today. I used to make a lot of healthy desserts on the channel. I haven't done that in a while. So today we're going to try to make black bean brownies. For that, first off, I have the oven preheating to 350. I've gone ahead and lined this eight by eight uh, baking dish with parchment. And we're gonna go in with our black beans. I've just drained and rinsed these. This is a gluten-free recipe. We're not using any kind of flour. So we are getting our binding powers from almond butter. I like to use the raw almond butter from Trader Joe's. It's just my favorite texture. It's super smooth and creamy. Also adding in some maple syrup and a little splash of vanilla extract. I'm just gonna give this a scrape down and process it one more time. We're just trying to get the black beans as broken down as possible. Okay, it's pretty smooth. So now we're gonna go in with all of our other ingredients. So we've got some sugar. This is almond flour and cornstarch along with baking powder and baking soda. And I'll have the recipe in the description box in case you wanna make this. We have some cocoa powder as well. I'm gonna combine all these ingredients. It's pretty well combined. And the last thing we're gonna do is add in our chocolate chips. This is like a little over half a cup and I'm gonna save just a few to put on top. I'm gonna try the batter. It's really good. Wait, will you try this first? Yeah, on camera? <sighs> it's black bean brownies. Isn't it good? Mmm. Yeah, you would never, you wouldn't know. It's not beanie. I feel like it could be eaten like pudding like that, mm -hmm. honestly, but. It is delicious. Good. These are going into the oven for probably around 30 minutes. Yeah, and then they need to sit and com cool completely before you cut into them because any like bean-based dessert just always wants to fall apart unless it's like really solidly room temperature. It's actually the following day. I did a terrible job at wrapping up the video yesterday, but I made dinner, of course. I just baked my tofu that I had marinating 400 degrees, about 35 minutes, just until it was golden brown. And I gave it a flip around the 20 minute mark. And then I served the tofu with our mango salsa, of course, and some coconut rice. It was so good. I used a recipe from Recipe Tin Eats blog. I'll link it down below. It's super easy. You just need rice, jasmine rice, um, can of coconut milk, salt, a little bit of sugar, 
um, I just realized that I used coconut milk in three of the four recipes in today's video. But yeah, I really like dinner. I highly recommend the combo. It was just really nice having like the fruity salsa on top and the coconut. Um, if you wanted to top the coconut rice with some toasted coconut flakes, I think that would be amazing. I was just a little too lazy to do that. And then for dessert, I had one of my black bean brownies. I was really happy with how they came out. This is my first time testing that particular recipe. So I'll have that linked in the description box. I'm gonna tweak it just a tiny bit, maybe make it a little bit sweeter and add a little bit more cocoa powder to intensify the chocolate flavor, but I'm a big fan. You can't really taste the beans at all. And I do like that anytime you're making a bean-based dessert, they tend to come out like really like dense and fudgy. So yeah, I like it a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed, can maybe draw some inspiration from it. I will say this one is like a little less realistic in that I almost never make more than two recipes in a day. Like usually when I'm filming my what I eat in a day videos, one or two of the recipes will already have been prepared a day or two ahead of time and then I'm eating them as leftovers. This time I just didn't plan it as well so I ended up cooking three recipes in one day. But So take it with a grain of salt, um, but I hope it inspired you and I will see you in my next video. Bye.